How's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I've got a new customer that's complaining they don't have any AC and it's a super hot week. So let's go out there and see what we can find. Let's do some work. This video is brought to you by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. And by RLS, original, patented, proven. So we're in mid-June and it is full-blown summer heat. This week is supposed to get up to 100 degrees as the high plus the humidity, so it'll be probably 110 or beyond with the heat index. So we gotta make sure we stay hydrated and be safe. All right, so we got the thermostat turned on. The blower inside is running, but nothing out here is running, so we're gonna go ahead and get the panel taken off and see what's going on. Got these in here pretty tight. this out. So it looks a little dirty for one. So the first thing I'm going to do is check voltage because nothing's happening. So I'm going to check incoming voltage. And we're showing zero. Contactor is pulled in, so low voltage side is good. Now I'm gonna to come to the disconnect. All right, so this, this has a fusible disconnect. So you got fuses in here that we wanna check. So I wanna go ahead and switch over to continuity. And check our fuses. All right, fuses are good. So that means we have a tripped breaker inside. I have to go, that might be right here. Wow, okay. Yep, here we go. 30 amp breaker is tripped. And these fuses are 20 amps. So that's strange. You would think that these would blow first before the 30 amp breaker but uh, sometimes the time delay on these fuses are a bit longer than an actual breaker, so the breaker is a little bit more sensitive. So before I turn the power back on, I'm gonna check um, all of my wiring to ground to make sure there's no direct short. And then if there's not, I'll go ahead and get it turned back on and see what's, see what's going on. So we're still on continuity. Let's see, where's our ground wire? Yep. All right, so we're showing the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the wires and let's see if it's the compressor or the uh, condenser motor. All right, so what I'm gonna do is disconnect the uh, wires from the contactor to the compressor. And uh, that way I can check and isolate the actual compressor. that's not touching anything all right so the wires are shorted to ground at least from that point to the compressor so what we want to do now is, is take this lid off unplug the wires going to the compressor itself and then check the terminals on the compressor so that way we can make sure that we know it's the compressor itself it's not some wires in between Good. 
So on this scroll compressor, you can just unplug the wiring from it if it's not. There we go. Make sure you want to inspect it. Everything looks like it's good. No overheating. So now I'll check the terminals directly to ground. There you go. All right, so that's pretty much all we're gonna be able to do right now. I'm gonna call and get availability on that compressor. I do know that this system is still under warranty, so um, we will have to go through that, that process of the warranty and everything. But um, that's pretty much how I go from start to finish on diagnosing a bad compressor. And uh, we just need to get a new compressor in here and get these guys cooling as quickly as we can. a good idea to reconnect all of your wiring don't just unhook it and then leave it um, you know because you don't know if you're gonna be the one coming back or if it's gonna be someone else and you know it's just a good habit to put things back the way they were one thing when you when you have a compressor replacement um, what I always recommend to do is swap out your capacitor and your contactor and on this particular system you've got a start capacitor as well so all of these components are under warranty, so you might as well, when you have a failure like that, is replace all those components with it. So I'm gonna be replacing the start capacitor and potential relay, those go together, the contactor and the run capacitors. That way all the starting components and run components are gonna be replaced. All right, so got on the phone with Train and unfortunately they don't have that compressor in stock locally. So they gotta get that shipped in. It's gonna take a few days, which I feel really bad for the customer because it's gonna be super hot this week. Fortunately, it is their upstairs system and their bedrooms are downstairs. So that's a good thing. Uh, and one thing I wanted to note, this is uh, an electrical short failure. So what can happen on the compressor side is that it could uh, burn that refrigerant. So what we wanna do when we come back out to replace this compressor, we wanna uh, pull the oil out and we wanna check the refrigerant to see if it is burnt, if it's contaminated. And if it is, then we're gonna have to blow the lines out really good because it is a split system um, and then use all new refrigerant. But I won't know that until I come back because I don't have any of the testing stuff with me. And um, you know, it's best to do that with the oil that's in the old compressor anyway. So that's a good thing to do. Whenever you're replacing a compressor that has an electrical short, that's something that you wanna check. So that way you're not introducing um, contaminants into the new compressor uh, going forward. So anyhow, that's gonna to complete today's video. I will make sure I do another video coming back, replacing the compressor and showing you that process. So I really hope you guys got something out of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.